What it is, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Got a few things to talk about today on the channel. Uh, last night, uh, we took uh, the girlfriend's a Jeep person, which is fine. I'm okay with that, but you know, I'd rather stick with my big Fords, um, such as the, uh, the big dog here. But that's okay. She likes Jeeps. I'm all right with that. So last night, we took the Jeep. Um, it's a big Jeep event going on right here in Dover Downs on the racetrack. The NASCAR track. Uh, we um, got to ride out on the track, which was kind of nice. Um, I think we did seven or eight laps on the track. So I'll put some video up towards the end of this video of us riding on the track. It's, it's pretty cool. It was neat. Um, so that was last night's adventure. So today, uh, always got a lot of things going on. Got a good buddy of mine's truck here, uh, 98 Dodge pickup. Getting ready to uh, throw down some ball joints in it. Um, it, whoops, get you in the sun there. Uh, getting ready to throw some ball joints in it. Uh, it lost a wheel bearing. I don't know if you can see there. But, uh, just your standard old Dodge 1500 four wheel drive. So I was going to take a second and talk about these ball joints that I've been using, uh, for quite some time now. Uh, now of course everybody knows I'm a Ford guy, so I try to put Ford ball joints back in my stuff. And customer stuff if they want, but sometimes price... You know, whatever. Um, I stopped using Moog ball joints a long time ago. They're just, they're quality. They used to be the number one go-to suspension parts, but over the last few years, it's just trash. Uh, I mean, just pure garbage. I don't know what, what's changed. I don't know what's happened, but um, I started using these. Now, I'm not affiliated with these guys. It's just a product I use, um, and they work really well. Uh, they're made by these guys. Unfortunately... They are made in China, but I will say the quality is definitely a lot better than what I've used in the past. Um, this one is a, a upper. Uh, they all have grease fittings. Uh, the pack they're even packaged really well in the box, which is actually kind of interesting. That they actually, so it kind of makes you think that if they take the extra time to package it really well, then you know you would believe it's a better ball joint, which. I've had very good luck. So there's your, uh, this is a lower ball joint, I could tell by the hardware. Now what I've had a problem with, with the Moog ball joints is, and I'll show you on this on this one right here, and this is one of the reasons why I switched. Uh, the lower ball joint, the nuts are always, on a full drive, let's, let's rephrase that, on a full drive. The nut is small. What Moog has been doing, and a lot of the other cheap companies, is they've been pinching the nut to make the nut a lock nut, which that's fine. I get why they're doing it. But the problem is, as you tighten this down, what it's doing to the stem of the ball joint is it's tearing the threads up, galling the threads up. And you can never get the ball joint fully tight. And that's a problem. If you can't tighten the ball joint up, then what good is it? Package pretty well. So what these guys do, which is very smart in my opinion, and it, it's because I said the the nut being crushed the way it is is a major problem because you can never get it all the way tight and then the stem the stem of the ball joint right here starts to spin and you can never get it tight well these guys put this in here so you can hold it if you need to but the nut has a loctite on the nut and the nut is not crushed i've never had one of these spin the shaft when I'm putting them together, never. But even if it does, you, at least you got a way to hold it. Moog and all them other cheap ones, they don't have that groove in there and the nut is always a problem and it always destroys the threads. So if you do need to take it back apart for something, you can't because the ball joints ruin it. So I stopped using them because of that problem. And just because I've put ball joints in some of this stuff, six months to a year later, customers, you know, calling up saying trucks wearing tires, having issues. I, I bring it back in, find out, ball joints are wore out. And I'm like, I just put these things in here. And I found these by total accident one day, really. I ordered a set of ball joints. They were out of stock. He says, well, I got a, a premium set is what they list in a computer. Just says premium. They're more money. Sends them to me. I get the box. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I, they are a lot more money compared to a regular ball joint. And uh, when I opened the box, I'm like, wow, they're packaged really nice. 
And I thought, hey, what the hell, I'm gonna give them a try. Well, when I got them out of the package and started using one, they are better. Uh, I put a set in a guy's truck. This was, this was a, over a year ago. And the truck was back in recently for some other service work. And um, they're just as tight as the day I put them in there. I shot some grease in them for the guy and they're still fine. So there's a real world test, not some salesman. I put these things in and it, the guy that has this truck, he doesn't service nothing. He runs it until something breaks and he calls you up. Oh, it's broke. So a year later of not being greased, I greased them and they're still nice and tight and no issues out of the truck. Where I have definitely seen Moog ball joints go six months and they're trash. I don't know what Moog has done or changed in their product line, but it is garbage. I mean, it's garbage. It's great for if you just need to throw some cheap ball joints in something to sell it and get it down the road, but that's about all they're good for. They're trash. I stopped using them. It's a waste of money. So I'm getting ready to throw these bad boys in here. That's uh, getting wheel bearings. It's getting a bunch of stuff. Rotors, pads, calipers, hoses. It's getting quite a bit of work today. So that's about all I got to share with you today on the channel because it's just regular day day around here. Um, yeah, that's about it. I uh, got uh, my buddy's um, 64 truck down there. I'm going to throw a set of points in it today. Uh, got it all tightened up. That was the 60 truck we had in here and did uh, the rear and brakes and a bunch of front end work on. Um, let's take you down there and show it to you real quick. It's done uh, and it's rolling out of here today. Uh, he can come pick her up. Everybody likes this truck. It's a cool truck. That's real patina on the truck. That's not some fake stuff that they tried to make. That's actually real patina. It really was a glass truck. Germantown Avenue, which is probably up in Philly. Um, just a cool truck. So he bought this truck. It was already lowered, but it had a bad case of amateuritis. It was really, really, really hacked together. So I ended up putting a rear in this truck, um, fixing a bunch of the suspension in the front. Uh, I put an alternator on it, got rid of the generator, fixed up some other stuff. Now there is some other stuff that we're going to do to it in the future. But right now, all he wants to do is um, get the truck to where he can get some tags on it. So that's the main purpose. We got to, anybody that follows my channel knows where any of these parts trucks are. We're looking for all of the shift linkage to put the shifter back up on the column. It's got some bull crap garbage floor shifter in it that the guy we bought it from put in it and it's a piece of crap. Um, it's really hard to get into second. It's really hard to get it into to reverse. The shifter's just junk. It's just a universal three speed shifter and they don't make a actual, Hearst doesn't, Hearst or B&M doesn't make an actual shifter to bolt to the strands. The only thing they offer is this universal piece of crap and it's junk. So we'd like to put it back up on the column where it belongs um, just to make this thing shift a lot easier. I'm trying to talk them into putting a V8 and automatic in it maybe down the road. I think it'd be cool, but you know, I don't know what he wants to do. He just wants to drive the thing. That's like, it's like the biggest thing he wants to do right now is just take it out and use it as a truck for a little while. But uh, hopefully it'll leave here today. Like I said, I'm gonna put a set of points in, set the timing full round of car bear a little bit get it to idle a little better it just idles like crap um i have not touched the thunderbird i just don't have any time you know just always got something going on i need to get this dodge truck done i got a lightning in there that i need to put the finish putting the rear together in um there's a chevy truck up here that i got the cylinder head just about ready to come off it's just been crazy so look i'm gonna get at it um i'll share some content here in a little while of what's going on and uh, I'll put these uh, videos up of um, Dover Downs Raceway. Uh, it's really kind of cool. And I'll tell you, it was neat. I've never actually been on the track itself. She's done this ride a couple of times. Um, like I said, she's a huge Jeep girl. And she's got she's got her own channel. Go check her out. Um, she shares a lot of Jeep stuff, um, pictures, and she goes out on the beach. Um, most of the time when we go out together on the beach, we take the Bronco. Uh, I think I've shared a few things on here. Uh, Bronco Cheapskate, which is the Bronco I built many channels, uh, or many, not channels, many videos ago. Uh, we've had it out on the beach every day, every uh, not every day, every weekend of the summer this year. Um, 
fantastic. So we're going to build another Bronco, and you'll be seeing it here on the channel. Uh, we're going to build another one with no interior in it, no top, no doors. Uh, it's going to be a straight wheeling beach truck for next year. Um, so we'll be sharing some content on that truck as well. But the it was cool because um, back to the track thing, I'd never actually been on the, you know, I've been to the track. I live a mile or some way from the track. So it's not, a, you know, I've been down to Dover Downs. With it being the, uh, they call it the Monster Mile, for you guys that don't know. And it's got steep banks. Those banks are pretty steep. But um, it's a concrete track, you know, um, coming out of turn four. And that little short straightaway, boy, she's not smooth at all. She's pretty rough. And in a, in a leaf spring Jeep, it's rough anyway. But um, man, it gives you a new appreciation. Those cars come by 200 mile an hour on that rough little track. That's pretty cool. I'll tell you, it's pretty cool that those things even stick to the track. Because I'll tell you, we were only going around the track about 45 mile an hour. And that was enough for me in that truck because it just, uh, you could tell. But uh, it's pretty cool. So I'll put the video up. Check it out. Enjoy it. Holler at your boy. Catch me uh, a couple days. Deuces. There it is. What's happening? So today, we're going to take uh, the Jeep out on Dover Downs Racetrack. This so ought to be pretty interesting. So let's uh, spin you around and check it out. All right, here we go. appreciation for how these uh, cars stick to this track. Realistically, we're like this. 